Keraimites, Jackaro Toro here, and on this channel I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, uh, history, and so on. And I thought it was about time I started to talk about Australian Aboriginal religion, because I think there is a lot of interest in the West uh, in Aboriginal religions, and I can't see that anyone on the internet is talking about this. So then, who am I to talk about Australian Aboriginal religions? Well, I am a linguist. I have a PhD in linguistics from Uppsala University in Sweden. But, as I have discovered, the linguist who goes to a non-Western context, which the Aboriginal uh, context is, in some ways anyway, this linguist needs to be a jack of all trades. He needs to be able to pick up on what is acceptable in the culture, on cultural behaviors and patterns, and he needs to be able to pick up on what is acceptable when it comes to religion. What should and could he, he or she take part in, and what should he or she stay away from, and so on. So I have studied both anthropology and religious studies on the undergraduate level. I'm sure there would be people that are more qualified to talk about Australian Aboriginal religion uh, online, but I can't see that any one of them is doing that. So I thought, why don't I give it a go uh, and talk about what I have observed uh, and what I have read. And as it so happens, these two things go hand in hand to a large extent. Uh, and if you have more information you would like to contribute, feel free to write in the comments. So, first of all, I would like to mention that Australian Aboriginal groups, uh, tribes, are religious to very different extents. Uh, these days. For some groups it's very important to keep the old religion going. For other groups it's not very important at all. And in fact within some tribes many people have become Christians. Although we might note that these people often mix uh, old and new uh, beliefs and practices which is what has tended to happen when Christianity has been spread uh, across the world. I would also like to mention that the Australian Aboriginal is a modern human being in the sense that he or she has a smartphone in hand. And what does that mean? Well, it means that the Australian Aboriginal easily can see other ways of behaving, other belief systems, eh, and so on, online. Eh, and that in turn means that younger Aborigines do not always want to follow old customs eh, and patterns eh, and rules. So, the Aboriginal boy, who is expected to become initiated into adulthood, this seems always to be gruesome, male initiation in Australia, he might not want to. Similarly with a young girl, who is expected to marry a much older man, might not want to. And they might run away to stay with a relative somewhere who is more forgiving than those in their immediate context at home, who might allow them not to go through with these things. 
Uh, and the result of things like these are that old knowledge is lost when elders in some tribes feel that the younger members are not worthy to get the tra traditional knowledge because they don't follow the old customs uh, and rules. And this is, of course, unfortunate that old knowledge is lost. That's what I think. Anyway, uh, Australian Aboriginal religions have varied very much in Australia, which is to ex be expected since it is a continent we are talking about. Nevertheless, uh, the religions are usually uh, ex expressed to be eternal by Aborigines. They have always been the same, they are monoliths. And yet, in practice, they are ever changing. It is a fact that religions change over time with culture. This goes for all religions. And it is also known that religions without holy scriptures can change very fast. Uh, and the Australian Aborigines have certainly been under a lot of pressure since the 1800s from white Australian culture uh, and lifestyle. And so the religions have had to change as a result of this. But as I said, even religions with holy scriptures change. Or did I say that? Well, anyway, they do. Let me give you a few examples. First of all, there was a time uh, in Europe and the Middle East when the best scholars were to be found within the Muslim world. And then all of a sudden they weren't because the interpretation of Islam changed uh, and it started to be discouraged to study science, to get into science, or actually it was outright forbidden, I believe, I read. Uh, secondly, the Catholic Church claims that its faith and its practices, rituals and so on, they have been the same for 2000 years. Well, anyone who sits down to study church history will easily see that that is not the case. In fact, Catholic faith and practices, they have changed a lot over the centuries. Something else that has changed a lot over the centuries is the ideas about sin. A few years ago, I found a brilliant book by Paula Fredrickson, Sin the early history of an idea. You see, for 2000 years, Christians have agreed with each other that sin is that which is wrong with humanity. But sin, what is it? Uh, and Fredrickson shows that the interpretation of the word sin, what it actually means, this has always changed with culture, so Christians from different centuries would not have agreed with each other about what sin is. Yes, so and in Australia it's usually those who have the power to change the religion uh, who claim that religion is eternal, and that would be the tribal elders. I would think that there has always been a need to change religions in Australia. Tribes have taken, taken over the territory of other tribes. Uh, and scholars describe Australian Aboriginal religions as land-based and land-focused, meaning that there is a lot of focus on the land, the tribal territory. And whenever a tribe has taken over the territory of another tribe, 
they have had to justify this, thus change their religious stories. So this need has always existed. But as I said, since the 1800s, uh, Australian Aboriginal tribes have been under a lot of pressure, so their religions have changed fast. Uh, as it so happens, early religious scholars had a hard time describing Aboriginal religiosity as religions. Why? Well, there is no focus on the hereafter, so to speak, on eternity. Uh, and the big world religions usually have a focus on that. Perhaps not Judaism, but the other big world religions. So they ended up calling Aboriginal religiosity magic, which seems rather condescending to me. Uh, today, we do know that religions in different parts of the world can be very different from each other. Uh, and within religious studies, uh, it has been recognized that it's not possible with one definition of what religion is that fits all religions. Isn't that interesting? Instead, they talk about that there are family resemblances between religions. Uh, and this was originally Wittgenstein's term. Yes, there will be more videos about Australian Aboriginal religions. In the next one, I'm going to start talking about the dreaming. If you've made it this far, why not like this video and share it with someone who might be interested in it. Uh, and as I said, I will be back. So, see you later.